Josh Taylor versus Teofimo Lopez. Madison Square Garden. This has all the potential to be a fight of the year candidate. And I'm expecting it to be if both men are locked in, healthy, and ready to go. Let's get into it. Let's start with the champ, Josh Taylor, the former junior welterweight undisputed champion is back in the ring this weekend, June 10th, 19 wins, zero losses, 13 wins by way of knockout. I got to be honest. I wasn't a big believer in Josh Taylor like that until I saw him fight Regis Prograis, right? He, now that doesn't mean he hasn't fought good, solid opposition before that, right? Because he has, he fought O'Hara Davies, uh, Victor Postel. Ryan Martin, Ivan Baranovich, and like those are solid names, right? And he won them all pretty convincingly. But for me, I still wasn't fully sold. But when he stepped into the ring with Regis Prograis and I saw what he was doing, that's when I said, okay, yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta put some more respect on this cast name. This guy is actually really, really good. And this man can fight and he's got a lot of heart. Josh Taylor went into that fight on a mission. Progress' style isn't easy to combat. It's not easy to face. He does a lot of unorthodox things in the way he moves, right? But Taylor in that fight used his size, his reach, his inside toughness and ability. He punches in combinations from close range to mid range. The man knows how to get in on the inside and knows how to use his strengths and his reach and his size to his advantage. Both men fought with a lot of heart and will on that night, but Taylor's inside game to me won him that fight. His consist the consistency in work rate from both men was, was exceptional on that night as well too. But, but again, on that date, on that night, Taylor got it done. It was a great win for him. He was a contender probably in his 11th, 12th fight. And in 16 fights, he became a champion and one of the top in that division. After Progress's fight, he defended his title against Apun Kangshang, who is considered to be a big puncher. And Taylor stops him in the first round with a beautiful body shot that his opponent never got back up from. It was a quick night for Josh Taylor. Then after that, he's in a unification fight against Jose Ramirez, who had never lost before and was coming off some pretty good wins in his own right. It was a true 50-50 fight. We weren't really sure how that one was going to play out. Early on, you could see both men were trying to assert their presence assert their physicality, trying to get in on the inside. And after a few rounds, you could see Ramirez was starting to have some problems with the speed of Josh Taylor. Taylor was using his jab effectively. He changed his rhythm of the fight and he was patient, right? I've seen fights where Josh Taylor, man, he kind of smothers his attack and his work rate when he's trying to force the fight on the inside. But that night, it did not look like it at all. But at the same time, Ramirez made him work and earn everything, right? There were moments when he had Josh Taylor on the ropes and Taylor just stood there and kind of weathered the storm. And from in close, Ramirez was doing some good work also, especially targeting the body. Josh Taylor is a tough cat, man. He's a lot tougher than he looks, right? right? And he can take a shot and he can press forward. Not a lot of people can do that, right? Not a lot of people can take a shot and press forward. Some oftentimes when a fighter takes a shot, they back up and they kind of retreat and sometimes even shell up right where they are. But Josh Taylor has the ability to take a shot and come forward. And and yes, he's skilled, but he's also got a lot of heart and has a lot of will. And that's what he also fights with and can go to dig from if he is finding himself in trouble. On that night as well, too, Taylor was countering very well in that fight. He caught Ramirez with a counter left hook that dropped him in the sixth round and caught him again in the seventh round with an uppercut. Josh Taylor does not need a lot of room to go to work right? Just a little bit of space and his length and speed, he can capitalize on it. That was probably, in my opinion, one of the best fights, if not the best fight that I've seen of Josh Taylor. Defense defensively, yeah, we would have liked to have seen a little bit more head movement, but a great fight nonetheless. I mean, that was a fight where he got a unanimous decision victory and dropped Ramirez twice. Now, in his most recent fight where he fought Jack Catterall, 
a fight to me where I felt like, man, he kind of took Catterall lightly. That was a fight where he was supposed to look great in his home country, and it turned out to be the complete opposite of it. I've said it before, and this is why I gave Josh Taylor a little bit of grace in this fight, right? When you've had a massive amount of big moments in big fights, right? You're bound to have one that isn't as great, right? You're about to have one that's an okay performance. And that was Josh Taylor's okay performance. He smothered his work in that fight. He looked like he was rushing his shots, trying to land one big shot to close out the show, but it wasn't working, right? He realized in that fight that Catterall is a good, solid, hungry fighter who's got skills, who wasn't just here to lie down to you. Right? I think we can all make a great argument that Josh Taylor lost that fight, right? Like, like we, he got the win, yes, on paper, absolutely. But when we're watching the fight, you can say Jack Catterall won that fight. I think Catterall won that fight. But Catterall didn't win the fight, if you know what I'm saying. But, you know, Taylor is the champion, and he was at home. He got that hometown, home crowd feel advantage and all of the good things that comes with being at home. Yes, some of those rounds were close. But again, you can argue that Jack Catterall won that fight. But because at the end of the day, if we're talking about who landed the bigger shots and who was consistently outlanding the other... It was Catterall. Not to mention, Catterall scored a knockdown, right? So yeah, not the best performance from Josh Taylor, but I give him grace. Every performance is not going to be a great one. Every performance is not going to be a great showcasing. At some point, you're bound to have one fight that is kind of meh. So now that he's gotten that out the way, I'm expecting the best version of Josh Taylor that we have seen since that Ramirez fight. And he needs to be like that because Teofimo is a good fighter who can give a lot of people problems. Still have a lot of questions about Josh Taylor in the sense of he's coming from a torn tendon injury in his foot. And that can often affect things movement wise. Just something to keep in mind. Now, let's talk about his opponent, Teofimo Lopez. 19 wins, one loss, 13 wins by way of knockout. Teo is a great talent. The last thought that I have of Teofimo Lopez, I don't know what your last thought was, but my last thought of him was when he fought Sandor Martin. And after the fight, he said, do I still got it, man? And he said some stuff to try and play it off after people were asking about it. But when I'm watching that, man, I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's not how it works. Can I give you a quick insight, right? From the professional setting, right? From my experience competing at the Olympic games and on the, tr and on the track and field circuit and competing against, uh, and competing against the best in the world and the fastest men in the world, I've had races where I felt like it was my time. I've had races where it felt like everything was aligned, right? And things were starting to connect for me and it was starting to go in the right direction. And I've had races where I've asked myself, man, like what's going on? In those moments when things aren't going well, those are your purest thoughts and your most realist forms of thought in that moment. That's exactly how he felt. I'm not saying he stayed in that feeling, but that's how he felt in that moment. And an athlete is at their most vulnerable moment when they are finished after their competition, when they are finished after their fight. If they win, you'll get that kid joy type of feeling, that belief, that enthusiasm, right? It, it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you can be the champ right now, next fight. But if they lose, you'll get discouragement, you'll get doubts, right? And you'll get questions. These are all things that you have to combat moving forward. And it never really goes away because if you're doubting one thing about yourself, those thoughts were always there and certain performances make you think about it and it starts to creep up in your mind and it sticks there until you can answer it in your next fight. With that being said, 
what Lopez, what Teofima Lopez can do in the boxing ring when he's locked in and in good spirits, you cannot deny his talent. And he's got some great wins on his resume. Remember when he fought a undefeated and prime Nakatani? Man, he was losing that fight early, right? I think he was just having some problems how to figure out the bigger and taller fighter with the bigger reach. Early in the fight, he was missing on his shots just a little bit, right? But as the fight went on, what he missed on early was starting to connect. His speed was showing and his boxing ability and IQ was showing. To be able to make adjustments in real time is an awareness thing, right? And you need that at the highest level. And you, and you feel that and learn that with experience, right? But it dials in a lot quicker for some than it does for others. Teofimo has a good boxing IQ. Lopez's speed and power continue to show as the fight went on. He fought a great fight and it showed that you can't ignore this guy anymore, that he's not a prospect anymore. He's a contender. Lopez did his thing in that fight, man. Landed some big punches on Nakatani, but Nakatani, man, some, some of those punches he ate, right? And some of those punches Nakatani ate and kept pushing and countered Teofimo and countered some shots of his own. It was a very good fight. And now we got to see how Teofimo was against the top in the division. After that fight, he goes in the ring to fight Richard Comey, a well-known fighter in the division, won the IBF lightweight title two fights before that. Lopez caught Comey with the perfect time shot and Comey got dropped and his legs just never got underneath him after that fight. Talk about way to arrive in fashion, Teofimo Lopez, to become a champion. And the, that, was a, that was a massive win for him when the moment could have seemed too big for him. A dominating performance for a great night for Teofimo Lopez. Then he goes to fight Vasily Lomachenko, a fight where he wasn't really expected to win. Not that people completely counted him out, but they thought Vas Vasily Lomachenko was a superior fighter. And you can argue that that's true. That was a fight that would not only just make him undisputed, but a fight that would stamp him as one of the tops in the division. In that fight, Teofimo took full advantage of Loma's slow start and banked the early rounds of the fight. Now, we know Loma came on strong, and that's what Loma did as the fight went on. But Lopez stood his ground and seized back control of the fight in the final round, and he won the fight. That was a great fight for Teofimo Lopez, man. The joy in his team, in his spirits, man. But I got to say this as well, too. In my opinion, just from watching his mannerisms in that fight and watching the excitement after the fight and how much it meant to him, man, that was the last fight that I felt like Teofimo Lopez was having fun in the ring. His personal life started to bleed over into the boxing ring. And once you fight with a level of heaviness and stress and pressure, it generally does not go over well. And that's what happened to Teofimo when he fought George Cambosis Jr. Cambosis is a good boxer, but I think Teofimo is a more complete fighter. But he came in with a lot going on, a lot of heaviness and emotions into the fight. Then you add that with the delays and everything else that came with it. Cambosis in that fight, how he won, man, he was just better prepared and tapped in mentally. And one thing about Cambosis is he may not have all of the physical talent and skills and gifts like some of these elite fighters in the division, but you cannot deny that man's heart. And that night, his skill and his heart helped him get the job done. After that, Teofimo suffered his first loss, and he goes up to 140. He fights Pedro Campo, stops him in seven rounds. A good first fight at 140 in his most recent fight against Sandor Martin. One can argue that Lopez lost that fight. You wouldn't be completely wrong. Lopez didn't look terrible by no means, but he didn't look great. He did get the split decision win, but it was a bit of a sloppy fight for me, in my opinion, right? Martin fought a good tactical fight. I, I think if he was even a bit more aggressive and let his hands go a little bit more, right? He might've been able to come out of there and get the flat out win. Teo Fimo is used to being the bigger man. At 140, he's not really the bigger man. You know what I'm saying? The scorecard of him and Sandor Martin, I think was like 97-92 or 97-93. That, that scorecard was a little bit wide for sure, right? But, you know, we'll see 
how it goes this weekend for Teofimo Lopez, like where his head is at and see if he can come in alignment. Because when he is aligned, man, he's a, he's a great talent that can do a lot of really good things inside of the ring. So who wins? Honestly, I have questions for both men, right? Tendon issues on any part of a person's body can be worrisome, right? How sharp will T look? Taylor isn't a stranger to big fights and going down to his opponent's home and beating them and fighter under big pressure, right? Boxing is what have you done lately? What have you looked like lately? And Taylor has not looked good in his last fight. He did not look good in his last fight. But you can say that as well about Teofimo Lopez. The biggest thing for me with Teofimo is what's his mentality like? Right, like what's going on up here? Can't he compartmentalize and keep what's at home at home when he gets inside of the ring? I also didn't like some of the instructions in his previous fights that his dad was telling him to do. His dad always thinks his son is winning, and that's not always the case, man. You cannot have that in your ring. When you are losing, you got to tell it like it is. But again, take all that away and look at these two men. They will both be looking to put on a spectacular performance, a great performance. But I'm taking Josh Taylor to win this fight by decision, right? I think his size and his style are going to make Teofimo uncomfortable and put him in a tough position. But Teofimo will come on late and make it close. But I think Josh Taylor gets it done. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Just start a membership section on the channel. I don't always get to do all of the suggested videos you guys suggest in the week, but if you become a member, those suggested videos rise to the top and I will do my best to get those done for you. Or if you would just like to become a member just to support the channel, man, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Shout out to all the members holding down the membership section already. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 3K subs and we need your help to get there. So make sure you're continuing to share, like, and subscribe and pass it on to someone else who likes boxing, who likes MMA. We got more MMA breakdowns coming for all my MMA subscribers out there as well too. I got you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.